Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of At My Desk. I'm, of course, your host, Dr. William Lester, and I want to thank you for joining me. I also want to take a moment to thank those of you who have subscribed uh, to my YouTube channel and to those of you who have left positive comments about some of the previous episodes. Today, we're going to have a little fun because, of course, we're down to the end of September, and that means October is coming, and that means Halloween is coming, and I thought it would be fun to share with you what has uh, become one of my annual, little personal annual traditions, and that is the enjoyment of some of my favorite horror films. So, we will talk about some of these films over the next a few weeks, but today I wanted to zero in on Hammer films. Now, some of you will know what I mean when I say Hammer films. Some of you will go, what is he talking about? Uh, of course, Hammer Films is a British film company that in the 50s, 60s, and 70s uh, created some of the most memorable horror films ever. And uh, as a side note, I should tell you that they are actually, uh, after a long hiatus, they are actually back in production. So that's good news uh, for people who are already Hammer fans and for people who have yet to discover Hammer horror. Okay, so uh, I could probably take up three or four shows to really comprehensively cover Hammer but we're going to hit some of the highlights. And uh, so you, you should consider each of these as recommendations for you to pick up. Um, all of these titles are available out in the stores, your Targets and your Walmarts. And they're available all over the Internet. So first, let's talk about Hammer's Dracula series. Uh, in this series, what you'll see is Dracula being portrayed by uh, the great uh, Christopher Lee. In some instances, you will see his nemesis, uh, Abraham Van Helsing, being portrayed by Peter Cushing. And of course, this has become uh, an almost iconic matchup. All right. Uh, the first film, 1958, uh, The Horror of Dracula, which of course was loosely based on the Bram Stoker novel, and uh, it really does in many ways set the tone for all of the hammer horror that, that comes after it. Uh, gothic uh, scenery, gothic motif, motif <laughs> and um, uh, rich, lush, settings, uh, uh, high suspense, uh, and really gripping story points. Really just a lot of fun. And uh, so if you're new to Hammer, this is a great place to start. If you're an oldie like me, you never get tired of it. It's always great to pull this down off the shelf and pop it in. Let this be part of your Halloween shindig. Now, like I said, this was a long series starting in 1958. Um, and I wanted to share with you some of the other titles in the series. Uh, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, 1965. Uh, and one of the things that becomes readily apparent is how creatively Dracula gets destroyed and then resurrected. And you'll see this play out throughout the series. And, 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 and it actually is a very, it's a very fun segue each time because they will remind you how Dracula was destroyed last time. And then, of course, that will lead right into his resurrection for the next film. 
And so a lot of times when, when Hammer fans, you know, uh, discuss the Dracula films, they'll say, oh yeah, um, uh, remember that one where he fell into the ice? Or remember that one where he uh, where he was burned by the sunlight, you know, and 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 we come to, we we key in on those ways that he was destroyed as points of identification. So this one is Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Some of the other films in the series, Dracula has risen from the grave. Right, that's that's one you have to have. Scars of Dracula. Taste the blood of Dracula. And you can see by some of these covers, uh, you know, this kind of lush, gothic, uh, uh, almost slightly splatter sensi sensibility. The satanic rites of Dracula. Getting deep into the occult. Then we even have one, Dracula AD 1972. Which, of course, is bringing Dracula, you know, into, you know, the hip 20th century, the hip chic coolness of 1972. For us, I mean, it's totally retro. But at the time, it was like, it was very innovative where they're pulling Dracula out of this 19th century gothic situation, you know, into uh, the, the world of 747s and limousines and you know modern day America as it was at that time so the Dracula series Hammer's Dracula series is an absolute must and just that series alone means hours and hours and hours and hours of fun fright frivolity enjoyment pick them up okay now other films other Hammer films 1959 Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing team up again, not for Dracula, for The Mummy. Christopher Lee plays the monster, and Peter Cushing plays his nemesis, the Egyptolo Egyptologist, Jonathan uh, uh, Banning. Uh, very, very good film. Has some frightful moments uh, and some brutal moments, some suspense. Uh, where they, they, they kind of detail the process of mummification as a decidedly unpleasant set of circumstances. Uh, but notice up at the title, it says, Nerve Shattering Shock. And again, in 1959, this is how you sold it. So, very good film, The Mummy. There are also these films here... Uh, what they call the Hammer Collection Double Feature, which is really cool because you can pick up for for not a lot of money uh, uh, a set that has two films in it. This one, this double feature, is The Mummy Shroud and The Plague of Zombies, both films from the mid-60s. And The Plague of Zombies is, is, a, is a fairly uh, innovative film that kind of set the standard for what zombie films would e eventually uh, turn into really creepy, really uh, horrific. Uh, a little bit of, of gore and splatter, not gratuitously so, but just a just an appropriate amount. So a good pickup. This will enhance the Halloween viewing experience. Uh, the Mummy Shroud and the Plague of Zombies. Another double feature, which is lots of fun. Features. Peter Cushing, not as Van Helsing, but as Dr. Frankenstein. A lot of people don't realize that Peter Cushing actually portrayed Dr. Frankenstein more times than he did Van Helsing. And it's funny because just the opposite is the popular conception. But Peter Cushing is in both of these films. The first one, Frankenstein Created Woman. So you can guess that that is loads of fun. And then, The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. This is Peter Cushing's final 
role, his final portrayal of Van Helsing. And here's what's cool about that film. It mixes the horror genre with the then popular kung fu movies. So you'll see all of these wild kung fu masters battling vampires. Right, I mean, yeah, you you can't possibly miss this one. All right, The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. Fantastic. One of my all-time favorites, 1961, Oliver Reed. The Curse of the Werewolf in which Oliver Reed plays the principal role of the cursed Leon Corrido. And even though this film is set in 18th century Spain, it's actually a film adaptation of the Guy Indoor novel, The Werewolf of Paris. This one is scary. And one of the reasons that it's so scary is that it, it does a great job of building up the terror, and the suspense. And I think that you may be an hour into the film before you even get a chance to see what the werewolf looks like full on. And wait till you see it. This one absolutely gave me nightmares as a child. Therefore, it's instantly an all-time favorite. Curse of the Werewolf, 1961. This has got to be part of your collection. Just a couple of others. Uh, now, there, look, we could we could spend three or four shows just doing Hammer. Okay? Like I said. You know, but we're just going to hit some of the highlights. Um, another double feature. Uh, the Lost Continent. And another favorite of mine, The Reptile. The Lost Continent uh, has almost... Uh, a Edgar Rice Burroughs type feel to it, you know, with the uncharted island and the weird creatures on the island. Uh, it's, it's got that kind of feel to it. Uh, the Reptile, uh, 1966, uh, returns to that kind of lush Gothic theme. Uh, and what happens when a person is transformed into a hideous reptilian monster so there you go right there that should have sold it right there double feature the lost continent and the reptile fantastic film another instance in which peter cushing portrays dr frankenstein frankenstein must be destroyed another one in a long series of frankenstein films uh, with peter cushing in the principal role. And uh, something that you might consider almost whimsical, uh, but a, a fine film nonetheless, uh, Vampire Circus. Vampire Circus. So see what happens when a traveling circus, which is uh, populated with vampires, see what happens when they go from town to town. Uh, uh, a fun film, scary moments, you'll enjoy it. Now there are, there, there are uh, many many films that that we didn't get to uh, in this in this segment. Uh, there's the the vampire lovers, Frankenstein versus the monster from hell. Uh, many many films, the creeping flesh, many other hammer hammer titles uh, out there for you to discover. But I planted the seed for you. And so it's up to you now. Go out to the stores. You know, check it out when you're in Walmart or when you're at Target. See what they have. Go to your online uh, retailer, wherever you, you know, order DVDs from. Uh, and investigate the Hammer titles that are available. And I think that you will enjoy them. And this is the perfect time of year. And... You know, you, you, you need to start now. If you're going to view them the way I do, I start now because it's going to take you weeks leading into Halloween. So now is the time to start. We'll talk about some more great horror films uh, on, the, on the next show. So for right now, uh, that's all for this episode. Uh, and join me again here at my desk. I'm Dr. William Lester. Thank you.